So in this video, I'm going to give a quick recap of stress and strain and how they can be really related together in stress strain diagrams. So let's pretend that we have a member and it's a cylindrical member and it looks like this. And we know that it's going to have a certain diameter, which I'll call DO, and a certain length, which I'll call LO. Now what's going to happen is we're going to um, put this member into tension. So that's going to mean we need to pull on it. And what we would expect is that the length of it would extend, okay, because we're applying a tensile force to it. And this would be compensated by a reduction in the diameter of your member. And obviously this looks very exaggerated to what you'd actually see in reality. So we can relate together um, stress and strain experienced within this, this member that's been put in tension. So if we start with the stress equation, this is the symbol for stress, it's equal to the force applied divided by the cross-sectional area. So I'm going to call this AO. And in this case, since we've drawn a cylindrical member, then you can calculate that area, um, you know, area is equal to pi r squared for a circle. But obviously, if you have other shapes, then you calculate the cross-sectional area there. All right, so this is our stress equation. Now, technically, this is going to be referred to as the average normal stress. Okay, this one here is going to be force. And this one is the cross-sectional area, and I need I put the little O down there because it's the original cross-sectional area. All right, so um, just to clarify, this stress here is called an engineering stress, and the reason is because we're referencing the um, stress back to the original area of your member. There's another type of stress called true stress, which instead of then referencing to the original area, you reference to the actual area. So as this, um, as you stretch your member, this cross-sectional area is going to reduce, and in true stress, you actually consider that in the equation. Um, unfortunately, though, um, or maybe not unfortunately, but for the case of engineering stress, though, it's always referenced back to the original. So the other... Um, property I guess we tend to be interested in is strain which we give this symbol and it's equal to the change in length divided by the initial length of our member so this is LO and obviously as this is extended then we've got a change in length delta L of our member so let's quickly label these so this is strain this is the change in length And this is the original length. All right, so let's just quickly talk about units um, for each of these different properties. So for um, stress, these units are the um, pascals as the base unit. Okay. Um, however, what we tend to find is that the members that we calculate the stress of, um, we tend to end up with massive numbers if we measure it in pascals. So what's sometimes better is to use an alternative such as megapascals in order to measure it just because that makes the size of the actual number um, a lot smaller. Remember that um, mega here is the same as 10 to the 6. So force, typically we want to measure in newtons um, and the other one we have at the end here is the area, the cross-sectional area. Now these members that we tend to be measuring the cross-sectional area of are quite small. So if you measure it in the regular base unit of meters squared, you're going to get incredibly small numbers. So what we tend to do is measure this in millimeters squared instead. Okay, and the benefit of this is millimeters squared is the same to as same as 10 to the negative 6 meters squared. And mega here we said was 10 to the 6. So basically what you find is that this um, cancels with this, the two 10 to the 6, 10 to the negative 6s, um, which means that you can work in megapascals, newtons, and millimeters squared, and you're always going to get out like the other one. So if you measure your stress in megapascals, your force in newtons, you can calculate the area in millimeters squared without having to do any unit conversions. So that's what I'd recommend, um, but feel free to go back to base units um, if that makes you more comfortable. 
All right, so on the other side here, we're measuring strain, and it's equal to the change in length divided by initial length. So we would expect that probably both of these have the same unit, so for example, meters or millimeters or whatever. And because it's one divided by the other, if they're in the same units, they're going to cancel on the top and bottom line. So strain becomes unitless. Okay, so these other two I would recommend measuring in meters or millimeters depending on um, depending on the size of your member, obviously. All right, so the next thing I want to talk about is um, the stress-strain diagrams. So let me draw an example one. So we always plot stress on the y-axis and strain on the um, x-axis. And a typical one, um, they don't all look like this, but a typical one for like a middle might look something like this. Oh, that didn't look very straight. Okay, that's meant to be a straight line there. Okay, so we have a few points of interest on this graph. So one of them is the transition where we go from a, this is meant to be a very straight line, um, into one that um, flattens out, I guess. So this point here on the um, stress axis is known as the yield stress, and it gets the symbol sigma y. Okay, yeah, so it, it, it's just marking the transition from the linear region of the graph um, to the um, nonlinear region. So another point of interest that we tend to have is the one at the top here, the maximum value that we get out. And this one is known as the ultimate tensile stress or ultimate tensile strength. So this one gets the little symbol like this, UTS. And the last kind of point of interest is the one on the end. This is where fracture actually occurs. So you literally break your um, specimen or your member into two pieces, two very distinct pieces. Okay. So prior to actually reaching this fracture point, um, all that we're doing is just causing deformation to the member. So up until we reach this point, all right, this section is known as the elastic region. So what makes this special is that any deformation that you occur um, or any elongation that you cause to your member is going to be recoverable. Okay, so the other part then on the end here is known as the plastic region. And for this one, um, if you land up, land with a, um, a stress up in this region, you're going to be causing permanent deformation. Okay. So um, in this elastic region, we'll talk about this one first a little bit. So again, if we have our little member and we load it up with a force, it extends a bit. But once we let go of that force, it's going to go back to where it was. Okay, so they have the same, same final length. For this one, we have our member. We're going to load it up. See, it goes really long and thin with, with the applied force. But when we let this force off, it's not going to go back to exactly where it was. It's still going to be a little bit longer. Okay. Got a bit of a change in the length here. So obviously then the last case is where you cause fracture. So for this case then, you know, you're actually going to split something into two pieces. So it starts like this, and then you pull on it, and you're going to break it into two. Break. Okay. So um, I think that's pretty much it for explaining the curve. So the only other, um, I guess, property of interest on this curve um, for the moment is going to be the Young's modulus. And this is defined as the gradient through the elastic region of the curve. Okay. Let's come over here. Young's modulus. So as I said, it's the gradient. And we tend to give it the symbol E. So because it's the gradient, it's equal to um, the rise over the run, or in this case, the change in stress over the change in strain. 
okay because stress is on our y-axis where we measure the rise and strain is on the x-axis where we measure the run okay and sometimes people draw it like this um, to symbolize the fact that it's the gradient along this this I guess triangle that you can draw so the only other point I really want to make about Young's modulus is it has some other names so um, for example it can be called the elastic modulus or it can also be called the modulus of elasticity okay they all mean exactly the same thing it's just Young's modulus and finally the units are the same as stress okay because remember that we said that um, stress has obviously got stress units for example megapascals or pascals bottom line is strain which we said was unitless so megapascals divided by nothing just gives you megapascals so that's the same units for e so I think that's everything that um, we need to cover in order to do the following questions um, in the stress and strain topic um, so as a few examples and I'll see you in those videos